Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're just going to give you a quick update as to where the LED cube project is. I felt I needed to make this video because this is just awesome and I hope the camera is picking up the, the different colors here. Um, basically what we have here is the LED cube fully assembled. So I think in the last video I made, I had one of the slices of the cube made up. Well, now I have all eight slices made up and all eight slices uh, soldered together. The anodes in each level are soldered together across the level. Okay. Then what I did was I have the I have most of the control board here soldered. Now remember, there's going to be something like 25 shift registers, but since I'm only demonstrating one column here in the cube, I was able to just solder a few shift registers in there, like the tail end of it so that we can actually control some LEDs. And I have the entire anode control here too, the entire power section. So we're using P-channel MOSFETs for that. And we'll get into that, man. It's really cool. And I'm glad I breadboarded this whole thing out and tested it like this because um, I ran into a lot of issues. Like rise and fall times of signals were kind of we're kind of crossing each other so during that cross time you're at, I was actually lighting LEDs it didn't want to light up so I had to add some delays in there I had to disable the, the uh, shift registers during a, for like a few microseconds during the rise and fall times when we'll get into all that you know as I go through the, the build and the circuitry once I have a schematic written up it'll make more sense but this video is just to kind of show you where I'm at and uh, basically what I did was solder little alligator clips I found this th these cool alligator clips at uh, Radio Shack that you know come in a bag of like a hundred or something crazy and then I soldered wires to them and then I was able to connect to each of the anode levels here and then I just picked a, a column out of there the RGB and then soldered that to my control down here and the other reason I'm breadboarding this up is because I'm not using a constant current syncing uh, shift registers. I actually have to use resistors. So I needed to figure out what the brightness level I wanted. And I'm glad I did this as well because the brightness I was going for before was way too bright. Shockingly, it was, it was too bright. Usually you're, you're in the other uh, camp where it's too dim. But it was so bright that it was like hard to look at. So I decided to dial that down a little bit and it's it was a good move to do that because I have to order a power supply a separate power supply for this and a power supply needs to be able to handle 192 LEDs on at a time because each level could be completely lit at a time and each level has uh, 64 RGB LEDs so the RGB gives me 192 uh, LEDs at a time and each with is pulling about 30 milliamps before I was around 65 milliamps so now that I dialed it down a little bit and it's still plenty bright it's just easier to look at because you have to remember this is an LED display so you're gonna be staring at it but uh, the other thing too that I wanted to test out right away is is I wasn't sure that the density of this cube I went with one inch spacings I wasn't sure if this density was great because, you know, once I built it all up, I'm like, oh crap, I don't know if you'll be able to see the LEDs in the middle. Well, the good news is you can see it easily, so, and you might be able to see that in the camera. Let me see if I can sort of like move the camera here a little bit to show you how cool that is. And hopefully the colors come out in the camera. Probably not, it's probably just wash, but I'll find out later. Okay, so anyways, that's kind of where I'm at. Next steps are going to be to mount the cube to a foam board and then drop all of the RGB connections into the through the foam board to solder up the wires on the other side. Then, God, somebody's blasting their horn outside. Then the other thing is I need to drop down the anodes through the foam board as well. So for each level, and I have to stagger that so it's not just a sh you know, whole crap ton of uh, rods here going on one side so I'm gonna have to stagger it and I was thinking see I'm, I don't want to get off on a tangent here but like I always do but since I'm supplying so much current to each level I was thinking about actually having like multiple connections to the anode for each one of these uh, for each level just so you know you're kind of sharing the current a little bit and it's not 
so much current because this is just 22 gauge wire but uh anyway that's all i wanted to talk about in this video is just kind of give you guys a quick uh update on that so the project is going smoothly and it's it's moving forward the cube is built it's not perfect if you looked at it like straight it's not perfectly symmetrical but it's good enough for what i'm trying to trying to do now most people won't even notice so anyways that's uh that's where i'm at today thanks for watching